826 North Rampart Street in New Orleans. It seemed like just another ordinary house, a normal family home, nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing, that is, other than the boarded up windows and doors. And it was on my recent trip to New Orleans that this house and the peculiar story behind it grabbed my attention. This is Zach Bowen and Addie Hall. Zach and Addie had a cute love story at first. They met at a bar, a connection sparked. They would drop in on each other at work, leave little love notes tucked away for each other to find. They fully bonded by staying and roughing it out in New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina, defying its relentless chaos and destruction. Their tale of love and survival amid the ruins of New Orleans went noticed in the local news and was even ultimately profiled in the New York Times piece. Strangely, both Zack and Eddie seemed perfectly in their element in the weeks after the hurricane, doing without electricity, bartering drinks for food, and no jobs, bills, or responsibilities of the civilized world to worry about. It felt more like an extended camping trip than a disaster, and after braving the fury of the storm, it seemed like Zack and Eddie's relationship was stronger than ever. They rented an apartment on 826 North Rampart Street, assisted by a landlord who enjoyed the good press Zack and Addie generated for New Orleans. He was happy to have the celebrity lovebirds renting out his property. Their new home was partitioned above a voodoo spiritual temple, the owner of which was a man held in great esteem, almost reverence, by the locals. Love stories have waxing and waning periods like cycles of the moon. Zack and Addie's honeymoon phase started to fade. Zack and Addie didn't really have a stable relationship. Their neighbors complained about loud late night arguments. And although some saw them as a beaming, happy couple, others said they bickered endlessly until the streams could be heard right down the block. Alcohol and drug fueled spats became increasingly violent. They would constantly break up, only to get back together over the course of a few days. Zack confessed to his friends about no longer wanting to be with Addie, wishing he was rid of her. But nonetheless, he stuck it out in the relationship. On October 4th, Addie Hall went to their landlord to have Zack Bowen taken off the lease. Addie claimed Zack had cheated on her, so she was kicking him to the curb. The landlord wouldn't comply, instead urging Addie to go home and work it out with her boyfriend. Addie started missing work at her bartending job, and the landlord had not seen her in person for nine days. On October 17th, Zack went out to a local bar, the Royale Orleans. He ran his tab up all night pounding drink after drink until the bartender finally cut him off. Security cameras at the Orleans captured Mr. Bowen approaching the terrace, looking over it several times. Finally, after downing a final drink, Zach Bowen threw himself to his death. In Zach's back pocket, authorities found a note. Part of it read as follows. This is not accidental. I had to take my own life to pay for the one I took. If you send a patrol to 826 North Rampart, you will find the dismembered corpse of my girlfriend Addie in the oven, on the stove and in the fridge, along with full documentation on the both of us and a full signed confession for myself. Zach Bowen Police rushed to the address. Once inside, they were confronted by a macabre and grisly scene straight out of a horror film. Despite the warm October weather, the apartment itself was cold, the air conditioning set to a chilly 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The walls were spray painted with stark messages of regret and pain, such as, I'm a failure and the misery will never end. One message on the wall directed them to the stove. Inside the oven, and a large roasting pan, were a set of arms and legs burned to a crisp. Investigators on site noticed what appeared to be seasoning on the limbs. 
and on the counter next to the stove was a cutting board of sliced potatoes and carrots. The coroner would later confirm, based on tattoos and birthmarks, that the limbs belonged to Addie Hall. There is no definitive way to know what Zach Bowen's plans for Addie's body were. His suicide note didn't hint at a motive or any grand insane scheme. Wild rumors about the crime spread like wildfire all along New Orleans, taking on a life of their own, embellishing even the smallest detail. Zach's non de plume eventually became the Katrina Cannibal. In the years after the morbid crime, people reported seeing ghostly figures and unexplained lights around 826 North Rampart Street. They say that they felt eyes watching them from the darkness and sinister whispers carried on the night air. These next two songs are inspired by this infamous and tragic tale.